Hello and welcome to 5 Minutes of Postgres. My name is Lucas and today we're going to talk about handling integer sequence overflow in Postgres without downtime. Now this is a blog post by Jesse Soyland from the Crunch Data Team. He describes how they've helped their customers navigate problems around integer overflow. What we mean by integer overflow is that we have a data type like a 4-byte integer that has a maximum of 2.1 billion values. And once you have a sequence that keeps counting up and it reaches that 2.1 billion value, it actually will start erroring out. Now you might see one of two errors. You might either see a next well reached maximum value of sequence error. This is when the sequence itself cannot assign more because the sequence maximum has been reached. Or an integer out of range error. This will happen when a sequence could technically give you more values, but the data type in the physical table is too small. For example, again, you've reached a 2.1 billion mark and the next value that would be assigned would go outside of the four byte range for the integer. Before we jump into how to fix the situation, let's take a step back and see how we can even avoid running into this in the first place. Jesse has a useful query here that checks your database for this type of problem. And it looks at the last sequence values using the PG sequence last value function, and then says, is the last value close to the maximum of that particular data type. Jesse's query has two outputs that it produces a sequence percent, which refers to how much more space there is in the sequence itself, so the sequence maximum. And then it has a column percent. This is the physical data type in the table and how much more space there is to have values assigned. Let's say this happens to you and you're either at 93% or maybe you're at 99%. I've actually had issues in the past myself where I was in a car and suddenly got paged and I had to actually take my laptop out, I wasn't driving. <laughs> and I actually had to fix something because production was down because suddenly we could no longer assign new integer values. So very much a problem that can happen in real life and in real world situations. When this happens to you when you're in a pinch, the best fast fix that I've seen is using negative numbers. This is a bit of a hack. The sequence usually would count up. Now what you're doing is you're telling the sequence to instead count down and to have the next value be minus one and then count down from minus one to negative 2.1 billion. You could, in most cases, just run this one command here and the problem will be at least at the very moment fixed and your application will be online again. Now, of course, the downside is that you suddenly have negative values as your IDs. So if downstream in your application, you're parsing integers and you're not expecting the sign in front of the number, then that could be a problem. It might also not look aesthetically pleasing in your URL structure, for example. So it's not great, but it's the fastest way to fix this right away. How do we actually fix this for real? If you just went to the alter column and you just changed the data type, that would rewrite the whole table. There's no way to do that online. You would have an exclusive lock on the table whilst that rewrite is happening. Now, the one thing I want to point out different from what Jesse's article describes here is that if your problem is the sequence itself, so not the data type on the table, but just the sequence maximum value, sequence, you can actually change this on a sequence. And so you could technically raise the range of a sequence and then fix the data type of the table separately. Essentially the, the sequence is a generator of new numbers and then the integer or big int on the table that's a separate. You don't necessarily have to make a new sequence in terms of the data type, Jesse describes an approach here of how to do this using a new column and then backfilling that column and applying the change. Once you've uh, created your new column, you can alter the existing column to something like ID old, and then you have an ID new column, and then you can switch that over so that to the application would both look the same. If you're not down yet, then uh, this doesn't cause downtime. It doesn't take an exclusive lock. There are a few other things I want to mention. Two quick notes on, is this actually going to happen in real life? There's two articles from the highlight. First of this, which Jake Swanson from 2017, where he describes a particular situation that they ran into where it was essentially the night the Postgres IDs ran out. Alarms go off, 10.50 PM, and then they're like, huh, we haven't created a new row since 10.30, like for 20 minutes, what's going on? And so they ran into this exact issue back then. And he describes how to fix this, either alter column or having a separate table and writing into that. The other case where you may see this problem happen is when you have an old Rails application. Rails back before Rails 5.1 was actually defaulting to integer primary keys, not big in. This was a big issue for people. You started out with Rails, Rails just gave you the defaults of a regular integer four byte primary key, and then your application got popular. 
then the problem was that you would run out of the sequence values, you would run out of the integer range. This has been fixed as a Rails 5.1, so modern Rails applications shouldn't suffer from that, but if you have an old schema, you may see that problem because of that. The last, this is another post talks about the exact same problem by Radon from the Silofin team. And there's one important aspect that I haven't seen in the other posts, which is you also have to think about foreign keys. If you have other tables that are referencing your primary table through a foreign key type relationship, you have to also update those data types. What Radon describes here is an approach using triggers, which I think is a great way to solve this. When you're writing the foreign key ID, you're also writing to that new column and you're switching it over. This is a strategy that again only works if you're not yet in the pinch. The negative hack is the only way to get out of it in that moment. But if you know you're getting close to it, then applying the approach of a second column is the best way to solve this. Thank you so much for listening. This was 5 Minutes of Postgres. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear about next week's episode and talk to you next week.